Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China and Dong Shuang. For decades, Francis Valdon says charged premium prices for the wheels it made for high-speed trains and other rail systems around the world. That strategy changed after a Chinese state-owned industrial conglomerate bought the company in 2014. The new owner, Ma Shan Iron Steel Corporation or MA Steel, slashed the prices in a bid to dominate the market. Jerome Duchenne is uh, Valden's former top executive in France. He said, We were told that we shouldn't miss a single order. That was explicit. They have an appetite for economic conquest. The French firm was now in the service of the steel company's larger strategic goals to give it the know-how to make wheels for high-speed trains in Chinese factories and to gain access to Europe's highly regulated rail sector and other markets worldwide. For that, Valdons received low-cost credit from Chinese government banks and 150 million euros equivalent to 181 million dollars from MA Steel to stay afloat. Over the past decade, China has provided billions of dollars of subsidies to state-owned companies to acquire Western manufacturing rivals and to build factories beyond its own borders. Now, these overseas factories are roiling global markets with low-priced goods in sectors ranging from automotive tires and rail equipment to fiberglass and steel. Luisa Santos is the deputy director of Business Europe, the region's main business association. He said, Chinese companies are expanding. They are investing everywhere. This means that the flaws we see in the Chinese market are now being exported to other markets. The European Union in early May proposed the legislation to rein in companies in Europe that are subsidized by foreign governments. One of a series of measures that aim to counter the global expansion of Chinese firms. Zhang Ming, the Chinese ambassador to the EU, has said Europe's stance has worried Chinese investors in the region and undermined the EU's historical openness to foreign investment. He said, quote, We often see the EU as our professor for building our market economy, so we don't want to see our professor and our partner have any hesitation when it comes to these principles. Unquote. The US and the nations in Europe and elsewhere also subsidize their own industries, often through tax breaks, export financing, and research and development funding. What makes China different is the outsized role state-controlled companies play in this economy and its willingness to support their expansion abroad. The US and Europe have long relied on the World Trade Organization and the tariffs to penalize China for subsidizing exports with grants, tax breaks, and credit from state-owned banks, measures that help the country grow rapidly. But WTO rules weren't written to constrain subsidies that a government gives to its manufacturers overseas. The result? Chinese-owned factories outside of China usually face lower tariffs than those imposed on factories inside the country, or escape them altogether. Western officials and executives say financial support from the Chinese government allows Chinese-owned manufacturers overseas to operate on razor-thin margins or at a loss while they grab market share or serve the strategic objectives of the government. The problem, they say, is particularly difficult to address when the manufacturer in question is operating inside a Western market. China may never care about a profit because it's a non-market economy, said Michael Wessel, a member of the U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission, which advises Congress on China policy. We have to assess whether as a market economy we view that as acceptable. 
The Commission is recommending Congress give the Federal Trade Commission the authority to block acquisitions by foreign companies that receive government subsidies, particularly if those funds are used to execute the transaction. It also says U.S. authorities should have the power to screen plans by Chinese-owned companies to build factories in the U.S. for potential threats to national and economic security. In January, the U.S. imposed anti-dumping tariffs on tires from Thailand, South Korea, and Vietnam after Chinese companies set up production in those countries to escape Western tariffs on tires imported from China. The Chinese investments helped transform Thailand into the world's biggest exporter of tires. Chinese companies also are building tire factories in Algeria, Serbia, and elsewhere to export to the West without anti-dumping tariffs. Last year, the EU levied tariffs against Chinese glass fiber manufacturers that built factories in the Chinese-run industrial zone in Egypt. EU investigators found that the Chinese companies in Egypt had received hundreds of millions of dollars in loans and the funds transfers that were either provided directly by China's state-controlled banks or funneled through the Egyptian subsidies parent companies in China. The Chinese companies are challenging the tariffs at the European Court of Justice. In February, the EU opened a probe into Chinese government subsidies for building one of the world's largest stainless steel smelters in a special zone in Indonesia. China Railway Rolling Stock Corporation, or CRRC, a state-controlled rail giant, has built two factories in the U.S. The investments helped CRRC win over local politicians and satisfy rules that require a minimum percentage of goods purchased by public transit agencies to be made in the U.S. CRRC underpriced the nearest competitors by as much as 20%, securing contracts with Boston, Chicago, Los Angeles, and Philadelphia, according to U.S. government documents. In 2019, Congress passed a law that forbids using federal transaction funds to purchase passenger rail cars and buses made by Chinese-owned firms. But CRRC won a grace period that allows the company to receive funds for new contracts for two years, thanks to allies in Congress such as Democratic Representative Richard Neal, chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, whose Massachusetts district is home to one of CRRC's U.S. factories. Representative Neal said he wants to extend the grace period indefinitely. Marina Popovic, general counsel of the CRRC subsidy that is building the cars for Chicago, said the company is determined to stay in the U.S. passenger rail market. When M.A. Steel bought Valdens for just 13 million euros, the French company was in financial trouble. M.A. Steel sought acquisition as a way to expand its overseas sales channels. Valdens' brand is well known in the industry. And to acquire know-how to make precision wheels for high-speed trains. The company renamed M.G. Valdons got support from state-owned banks such as the Bank of China and the China Construction Bank, according to corporate documents, receiving credit at interest rate of 1% to 2%. After observing Valdons for a year, M.A. Steel told the company's French executives to ensure that its order book was filled, regardless of the price and the cost of production former executives said. That strategy caused the losses to balloon, they said. Mr. Duchenne, the former CEO, said MA Steel official told him Valdens could raise price again after taking market share. Mr. Duchenne recalled that one MA Steel executive explained the strategy with a Chinese saying, there is no such thing as barren land, only farmers who don't work enough. Valdons began to export low-priced wheels to Australia for mining operations. 
the surge of imports from both Valdons and MA Steel's plants in China led Australia to impose anti-dumping tariffs against the two companies. The same year, as losses mounted, MA Steel's board approved another 70 million euro in capital for the French company. Valdon is a bridge for the company to further penetrate into Europe and other overseas markets, MA Steel said at the time. MA Steel has used Valdons to navigate the procurement rules of big European wheel purchases such as the Dutch Bond, Germany's state rail company. Chinese rail wheel exports to the EU have already quadrupled since Valdons was purchased by MA Steel. MA Steel sent Valdons engineers to help its factories in China make wheels for high-speed trains. Those wheels require far more precise engineering than the one MA Steel already makes for freight trains. China's vast high-speed train network still uses wheels made in partnerships with European manufacturers. Dutch Bond is now testing high-speed train wheels made by MA Steel in China. MA Steel has increasingly used Valdons to finish and package wheels for customers in Europe and elsewhere that were made in China. Towards the end of 2019, MA Steel was absorbed into China Baowu, the country's largest steel company, which is owned by the central government. Under the new ownership, MA Steel said its rail business is continuing the strategy of global expansion using Valdons. When issuing the company's results in March, MA Steel chairman Ding Yi said this, quote, The Biden administration shows great interest in the development of rail transportation, which provides us with a great opportunity, unquote. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly.